Hey, thanks for joining us on B3, the Blue Banner's official podcast. My name's Nick Strauss. I'm John Pinnell. And today we're here with special guest, Mr. Ricky Starr. Thank you, sir. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm great. Give thanks. Yeah, so um, Mr. Ricky Starr, you are a musician, correct? Yes, sir. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what it is that you do? I, my day job, I am an entertainer for the sick and shut in, the nursing homes and the assistant livings. And for 19 years, I'm on the road singing in nursing homes and doing tours. I'm here in um, Asheville, North Carolina on a tour now. And um, I just left Atlanta, no, uh, Florida. I was in Florida for January and February for a tour. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. And for the last 19 years, I've been on the road singing in nursing homes every day in sick homes and assistant livings and retirement homes. And um, I met um, Mitch at uh, Camp Reggae, and he said that he was going to be putting some things on at the college, and he looked me up, and, and now we're here, and we're going to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. I think that what you're doing is fantastic. I mean, I think a lot about marginalized people in this country, and one that we don't often think about is our older people, the people that historically should be given the most respect, uh, historically the most wise people. Um, I mean, we we uh, often we we send them to nursing homes. We we don't treat them with respect. I mean, they're treated as lower class citizens a lot of the time, and there's stigmas, you know. But um, but you're you're against all that with your music, you know. Well, I was working in a nursing home as a CNA um, in New Jersey, uh, the early um, was it two two thousand two, and I've been a trained actor from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts since. 1982. Oh, man, that's nice. And um, always doing movies and plays. And, and as an actor, you know, you got to take any job you can take. So I had to go back and get my CNA license so I can get a job. And as I'm working in the um, nursing home, they have activities and they have entertainers coming in and they put on shows. And I'm watching the shows and it just came upon me that grandma and the people that are in nursing homes and shut in is really getting cheated from the entertainment. Mm -hmm. When we go to a show, we really get to see a show. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to the Tennessee Theater or any show, you get a performance. So the spirit says, you could do a better job, and if you take it to the top, you can take it all over. And I penetrated that spirit, and I went home, and I started working songs. Because I know one day, um, the um, entertainer not gonna be able to make it. So that day came and working in the institution, in the activities department at this point, I started singing. And from 2002 to now, I've been singing every day up and down the road here in America for nursing homes from free shows all the way up to I got uh, 200 bucks for a show once. But when I called the nursing home and they asked me, you know, how much do you charge? What can you pay? What can you give? If you only can give love and if I have a window, then we're going to give love. We're all going in that direction. Get old, get sick, have a car accident. You're going to wind up in someone who's going to be a caregiver for you. Mm-hmm. So it's not just old folks. You know, we're living in a time now where it's everybody. I was in a nursing home just the other day working, and a young man came out in a wheelchair, and I asked him how old he was. And he's 35 years old. He put his um, foot in his shoe, and a spider bit him. Oh. And then it'd take off his leg. See, it's uh-huh. like, like what are, the chances of that, you know, like you would never expect it, you know, and yet that's the reality, mm-hmm. you know. So, but it's true, we all need a little help, you know, and some more than others for sure, but it affects everybody, you know. But music, music is the key of life. And if you put music on, it makes you feel nice. Yeah. So, I like what I do. I, I love what I do. Um, you know, taking music to the sick home and uplift some spirits and uplift your spirit. It's my church now, you know, because we have musical ther- musicaltherapyministries.org. Now the people can go to and support. We're up and running over the 19 years I'm on the road. The people that's called this a ministry. And I, I love that. But I just go and sing. But now the people have come together, and we have a 501 now, and we have a musicaltherapyministries.org up and running so the people can just support their love and just pay a little more attention to the sick and shut in because we're only one step away from 
that happening to us. That's a that's that's a humbling thought. You know, we're only one step away, and I, I agree. I honestly, I see what you're saying. Um, mm -hmm. Who was it that first called it a ministry? I don't remember who exactly it was, but I started this work 2002, and around 2004 is when the people along the, the way has been saying, like, my, my birth name is Ricky Nelson Smith, but the people call me Ricky Starr. So they don't know me as Ricky Smith because they know me as Ricky Starr. I was in the studio, and I was preparing the album back in 2006, and another singer came in and asked the engineer, who's that singer? He's a Ricky Star, and from then to now, I'm Ricky Star. Hey, that's what's up, man. You said you started doing this work in '02, right? I uh, was singing uh, every day in '02, uh, working in nursing homes. Uh, oh, that was my first job in 1977. Wow, man, long time. I was uh, I was curious though. Is that is '02 when you first started making music, or have you been a musician for a long time? I've been a musician for a very long time because I've been singing from church days, you know, bands here and there you know, talent shows, all those kind right. of things, you know. And 2006, I was um, in with some uh, members of the Bob Marley clan uh, in a Rastafarian camp. Very uh, cool, very cool. Yeah, in uh, New Jersey. And they're just, you know, everybody's singing, a lot of musicians. And about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, King Benjai, 21 Studios, uh, was sitting in there, and I just started singing. And he said to me, he says, Rick, Go in the voice and thing and put the thing on and sing. So I put the headphones in, on, and went in the, the voice and booth, and I've been singing ever since. And they were saying, well, why haven't you been singing? I said, well, I really didn't have no spirit to sing, you know, because of the vibes. But now the vibes is on me. <laughs> yeah, and you got the purpose too, man. It all comes together, for real. That's that's magical, man. Um, you said you said that was Bob Marley's crew. Yeah, Bob Marley's crew. Yeah, a lot of those guys used to um, play um, with Bob uh, from the camp, and um, you know, very very skilled musicians. You know, Tremmy uh, uh, from um, Escaptolite, uh, uh, the King Benjai, um, Luciana came through there, Sugar Miner, all those guys. I met all those cats coming through there, and uh, just to be around the melting pot of some people from the island where the birth of reggae come from is where, you know, I got my training and I should say my um, my education, you know, about uh, the way, you know, Rastafarian life is and Caribbean life and just, you know, reggae music. You know, you, know, you don't have to be from Jamaica to love reggae music. You know, you don't have to be from any part of the world to love any music because music is universal. It's a spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, you mentioned earlier that, uh, it kind of started from, uh, your career as a musician kind of started from being in the church, and I noticed that there is a definite gospel influence oh, yeah. that I hear. Grandma says, um, if you don't put God in it from the beginning, then it's not going to work in the end. And there's a saying that what's gone bad in the morning can't come good in the evening. Mm. So if we expect to be successful in what we're trying to do, then I, I, I just know to give thanks. I, I, I just know to love people. You know, I, I, I don't know no other way. And I and I like I like who I am. You know, I, I, I just I just want to show love. And I, I'm not gonna change. I, I like it. It's a it's 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 a, it's a difficult journey, but I like the difficultness of it because I don't want for anything. I have shelter, I have food, I sleep on people's couches. And, and people are nice to me because I'm nice to people. Um, if you plant a peach, you're not going to get a potato. <laughs> so whatever you put out, you're going to get back. And, and, and that's the same way of the liberty. Whatever mm -hmm. your thoughts are, whatever your actions are, and your spirit is, you're producing that. You're breeding that. Right. So produce good thoughts. You know, breed good stuff. That way, good stuff will come back to you. It, 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 it's, it's, it's more than just the action of it. There's a thing that the natural mystic, the natural mystic is really powerful. And the natural mystic is the unseen. And the unseen is there. He who have eyes, let him see. He who have ears, let him hear. Right. So, you know, the spirituality, we have to, you know, spirit moves spirit. You know, and I just love, you know, uh, for you to have me here. Thank you for 
bringing me in and, and, uh, and have a little chat. I see, you say thank you for bringing you in, but I say thank you for coming, and like as such, it comes full circle, you know? Good, good, yeah. And um, I, I tend to not want to bring too much spirituality, you know, into the podcast, but the truth is I'm a very, uh, very spiritual person, you know? And um, so I try and express it through the medium of what I am saying if I'm not talking directly about it, you know? So music is like one of the ultimate carriers of spirituality, in my opinion. And so that's why what you do and what you represent as a as a Rasta musician, it doubles upon itself, you know. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask, because I know you said earlier, you said you're from the South, correct? Mm -hmm. Born and so, raised. Mm -hmm. Not from the islands. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask, like, how does the Rasta in you, how does the Rasta affect your life personally? Like, what does it mean for you? What is Rasta to you? Well, to me, anyone that shows love unconditionally is Rasta. For me. For me, anyone that doesn't see color or shape or size is Rasta. You know, anyone to me that doesn't put a judgment or label on something is Rasta. Mm -hmm. That's my personal, you now Ricky Starr's feeling and definition. You know, Rasta to me is just love from all of the Rasta. I don't like labels. Yeah. But if I have mm -hmm. to be labeled, if you want to label me, Rasta is my label, you know, if I have to choose a label. But I really don't like labels. You know, I just want to be a spiritual man in the earth trying to do God's work, you know, if I have to have a label. You know what I mean? I just want to be that being that's, that's just doing good, you know, and, and, and no matter what, you know, just suck it up and just try to make the best of it. You know, um, there's a saying um, that it's a great thing that a lot of the people were poor because poor people were less poisoned to a lot of things because they didn't have access to those things. So now that you have access to those things, you really don't want those things because you're never not used to those things. So everything has its benefit. Just show love, no matter what. It's not about the money. It's not about the big fancy house. I get a chance to live in all of them. And guess what? They're mine for that time. But I don't have to pay the bill. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because as far as my eyes can see, it's mine. You give it to me, you bring me in your home, that's mine. So I enjoy it. I sleep on the couch or in the bed or whatever, and I go on and do the work, and I'll see you next time around. Yeah. Right. So you got you got like a whole network of homies that you hit up to. Uh, well, I mean, St. Right? Augustine is one of the biggest spots over there for me, right? And when I'm there in St. Augustine, I was just there uh, for two months, um, and I can't let everybody that I know in St. Augustine that I'm there, because I can't go visit everybody. I'm there to do the work, but with the work comes things they call perks. You know, people love what you do; they're gonna support you. They're gonna make sure you got everything you need, and the Almighty has put that in my life. Okay, you are a father, okay? And you got three boys and you want them to go down to do some work. Well, you're not gonna send them down to do the work and not give them the tools to do the work. Well, my father's not gonna send me to go out here and sing for grandma and them and nice to people up and not give me everything I need. Right. And for 19 years, I've been having it. So I'm in the ocean now, I can't turn back. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is gonna work for Mr. John no more. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, I, I'm it's doing nice. my thing and, and I wanna keep doing my thing because I like what I do. It's like working for a higher higher purpose. Well, what happens is that I see the gratification in my work. Because when I walk in that nursing home tomorrow and I hear Ricky Starr's in the building, it reminds me of Elvis is, is in the building. You know what I mean? It's a good feeling. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, when I tell people what I do, when they find out what I do, it makes me feel really good because they don't know about nursing home entertainers. You know, it just mm -hmm. don't come across the you know, world. You know what I mean? Until someone in a family have to go and be in one of those places, you know? I got an email just the other day from one of my band members because their father-in-law was in a facility in another state. And he sent me an email and he says to me, he says, Rick, I really love what you do. I got a chance to really feel you today visiting the home over here where my, where my father-in-law is. The entertainers is here doing their thing and I only could think about you. Keep up the good work. That's my pay. For someone to recognize that I'm trying to plant a good seed, that's my pay. You can't buy that with any amount of money. No. I mean, I, I did, you mentioned it earlier, I wanted to ask about it. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what those other entertainers, the typical ones, the ones that maybe aren't doing it for the love, can you tell me what that is like? Because I feel like I have an idea, but I would really want to hear your description. Like, what made you feel like you had to step in? Well, I don't want to pass judgment, but it is what it is. When you go and pay your money, to see a, a performance. You see a performance. Right. 
So when we go to see Grandma and them, Grandma and them should see a performance. Yeah. They mm -hmm. shouldn't be cheated because they're in wheelchairs. They shouldn't be cheated because they're older than what we are. You know, um, I, had, I had to do a show in uh, Florida, and I'm always by myself. I, 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 I perform with the computer there with the music on it, the microphone, speak everything, and we're doing our thing. But this particular day, I have a guitar live, and I have a piano guy live playing along with the music. So like a little band. And when we got back to the home, one of the band members says, I have a hard time playing for those people. And I said, God, help me. I got to say something to this guy. Boom, I got it. I said to him, what people? He said, no, those people. I said, but what people? He said, the people we just left. I said, the people in the nursing home? He said, yes. I said, those people are you and me. Those people are him and her. He said, how do you mean? I said, Grandma wasn't always 80 years old. John is only 45. He had a stroke. Miss Susie over there, she was in a car accident. She's 25 years old. He said, oh. So we have to understand with the regroup. Listen, we're just a second away. Anything can happen to change your life any minute. So what I'm trying to do, if I do have to be in one of these facilities, I'm trying to play it forward because if someone has yeah. to take care of me, I hope right. somebody will come and take care of me like I'm trying to take care of the people through music. <laughs> so whatever you put out, remember, you'll mm -hmm. get back. And if you don't get it back, so what? You got to lose. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, and this is, I can only speak for myself, right? I feel like doing something for a righteous cause, I mean, that's its own reward, you know? And in a, in a manner of speech, that's the same thing as what you just said, right? I mean, but what you do, I mean, you said you've incorporated, it's been incorporated to a uh, 501? It, we have a 501. We're up and running now. I'm just off the phone with one of the ladies that the Lord put into my life to um, get this thing going. And it's like God Almighty who made me put me in this earth to do a work. So I have to find out what my work is. He didn't put me here to go work for Mr. John and make him rich. He didn't do that. Not for me. He put me to work for him. Now, if you don't serve humanity, how can you serve the Almighty? It's very simple. So you're never going to see a money truck behind the hearse. You're never going to see a furnace truck behind the hearse. You have all the land, a land truck. And you don't see those things. So that tells me that you come in with nothing, you leave with nothing. So while you're here, help somebody. Do something for humanity because you're doing it for you. You know, when I see mankind, it's mankind. It's only one race. To me, there's no white, black, blue, green race. It's, it's a human race. You know, not only do I agree with you on that, but it's funny. I have an Africana studies professor who made us do an assignment, uh, and it, the whole idea revolved around the idea that eugenics and race in general is all society constructed, you know. Um, you could say that's a black man, that's a white man, but genetically speaking, and uh, if you, just with some basic research, you know, uh, there's no gene that makes that person a black person. It's a, it's a societal understanding and marginalization of every different kind of person. But therefore, scientifically, even if you wanna if you wanna look at it from purely scientific, not even spiritual, um, there is no such thing as race as a absolute factor you know and if you want to talk about it spiritually i would say that that was never in question in the first place and you know what i'm saying no one who no one who sees a bigger picture would say that there's a difference between my spirit and your spirit you know yeah and if you look at it historically well we all have the same common ancestors you know <clears throat> excuse me looking at it through evolution we all came from the same thing we all came from the same continent we all came from that one humanity came from that one place and just kind of spread out. The motherland, man. Exactly. But it doesn't say um, uh, a white mankind, black mankind, no, it's... Indian can mind. Mm -hmm. It says mankind. Yeah. True? Yeah. So, so for me, then, it's just one race of people, mankind. Things are simpler, in my opinion, when you, don't, when you look at it like, in a simpler way like that, in a truer way. Well, th that's why I don't like the labels. Because exactly. when you start labeling it, then you kind of put a definite identity with it. Mm. But some things, it has no identity that you can label. Love. You can't label love. Love is just love. 
You can't put nothing to it or add nothing or add you can't add nothing to it or take anything away from it. It is what it is and you see it. It's a feeling. You can recognize it. But if you don't have it with you, you're not going to see the love in somebody else. Right. Like we've all felt I hope we've all felt love at some point in our lives, but love is just that label. Yes. Yeah. And you recognize that spirit whenever it comes upon you. Right. But like that label just does doesn't compare to the actual feeling yeah, when you're yeah, feeling. Yes, it. yeah. But we have to label things. So, so yes. Yeah. You know, like language in general, it's these man-made sounds, phenomes. You know, trying to have meaning from one person to another through a shared understanding. But nowhere in that does it leave you know the higher concepts and ideas. Because I mean, after all. How can we express something that's unexpressible with just something that we made up, such as words, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is, like, that's the role of music. Because somehow through sound, you can have feeling, you know? Right. And there's that energy. And um, and that's uh, that's kind of like uh, that's the dream, you know? Like, um, on the side, I do the, uh, the school's radio. And uh, if there was one thing that I could use it for, ultimately, it would be, you know, to spread love and ideas, you know? And uh, and that's what our festival's about. And that's actually why Ricky Starr, Mr. Ricky Starr, excuse me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that's why you're here, correct, in Asheville? Yes, yes. Well, like, I'm doing the um, the nursing home tour for the week. Oh, cool, and cool, And it, nice. it just worked out that, you know, at, uh, as I'm working here in the nursing home circuit this week that you have um, me on, but um, if I had the time, yes, and could have squeezed it in, I would have been here whether I'm here for the week or not. But thank you guys again, you know, for having Ricky Starr. I mean, sure. like, I, when I got the opportunity, you know, to, to bring someone that, that maybe helped me along the way, you know, to bring to campus. That's, that's what I want to do. And uh, earlier you mentioned Camp Reggae. I want to talk about Camp Reggae because I just I just want to like describe it for the listeners. You know, I um imagine a magical valley in the woods with a stage, beautiful people on both sides of the hill coming together in the middle around a fire pit, drum circle all day, love and music, mostly reggae, but my uh, band that I work with, Jamin Brahmin, was there too. And uh, thank God, because, I mean, that's why we're here today in the studio, <laughs> you know. Camp Reggae, um, I came down from New Jersey in 2006 and solicited some music to Camp Reggae, and they invited Ricky Starr to Camp Reggae in 2006. Uh, met a group of fine young people from Knoxville, Tennessee, and that's part of the journey while you saw me at Camp Reggae last time. Camp Reggae for Ricky Starr has really been a very good inspirational tool to meet people. Right. I met some really cool people. That, like As I say, that's why I'm here in your studio is because of Camp Reggae. Um, it's when magic. When I go over to um, Atlanta and do the tour in Atlanta, Camp Reggae has provided people for me to live with. You know what I mean? Um, it's just... Camp Reggae is something I would think I would like for everyone to experience because it's, it's a connection with people that are just trying to show love for those three days and care and share through music. Hmm. To me, and I mean, I mean that when I say to me, that's the role of a music festival, you know, or just any festival, any congregation. I mean, I, I think... Why do we have the church in our society so ingrained, you know? Is it because the ideology of Christianity is su super strong? I say no. I say a long time ago, people used to come together at the church. And that used to be a very important thing. For Fellowshipping. That used to be, exactly. Right. That used to be the most important time of the week because that was when you found what was important, not just through religion, but through community, you know? And community is, is something I feel that, like, our generation, the millennials, that's something that we we only have down right in some respects. You know, we got the social media. Mm -hmm. We got, we, we know how to get angry and throw a protest, but do we know why and how? And do we have the leaders? Do we have 
the the meeting places you know do we have the initiative and that's those are the questions i think that we need to be answering as a new generation trying to tackle old, old problems remember the song from michael jackson if you want to change the world the man in the mirror uh, yeah yeah so we have to really listen to that if you really want to make that change it starts with the man in the mirror so with your spirit and with your vibes it start right with you with what you're doing you're not talking about it you're being about it and what happened is that I started this year 2002 now there's four groups that I know of that's on the road doing the nursing home circuit because they saw Ricky Starr's show so it only takes one and that one can save a million so just spread the love now out of those four that's doing it someone will see one of them doing it and someone will keep on going so if there's no righteous left, right, then the city will be destroyed. Wow. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah when he told Lot to get out? Right. Yeah. So there's still righteous around. <laughs> we it still make, have a chance. It makes me think of Babylon, you know. I know Rasta, Rasta's talk about Babylon a lot in the music, and uh, but I feel it, you know, when I listen. You know, actually, I, I found a record, uh, a tape I found. It's Talking Blues by uh, Bob and the Whalers, and um, that and, like, Natty Dread. When I listen to those records, man, like, I honestly look at my own society, the one that we all live in in America, and I see a lot of poison, you know what I mean? It hurts. It really does. To, to think that, like, the things not only that we take for granted but that we willfully accept might actually be a piece of the downfall. That's a scary thought because it feels like there's no control, you know? Like, we're so entrenched in it. But I want to say... Like, we can't forget what goes around comes around. We cannot forget, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Trouble is up ahead. The people need to show love. Stop your war. Stop your crime. Love your brother and your sister. Because the people say they love Christ, who they never seen, and they hate the brother and the sister to see every day. So all we have to do, can't take a day off. If we keep on showing love in our business, just keep forward love because it don't cost me nothing. Love is, love is the key, man. Love your brother. Wow, that's powerful, you know. Yeah. I don't think, uh, I think, you know, it's got to be the most important part. You know, I wanted to ask you some questions about your upcoming music and stuff, but I, I, I want to take some time to reflect on that just for a second, like, Is it possible that maybe love is really the answer? I say, I think it is. For me. I only can speak for me now. Yeah, it's true. Can't speak for nobody else. <laughs> right. It works for me. And 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 I'm I'm kinda in the ocean with love now. Because I can't I'm too far out in the ocean to go back to shore. Mm. So I gotta just keep on moving like I'm moving. I'm just floating along now in my life. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> just trotting my way through Babylon. But you can't say that that does not have an impact. Like you said earlier, there's four bands that saw you and decided, I like what he does and I like how it, people react to it. So I'm going to do that myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that one small thing that you did. Plant the seed. And that you've been doing for ni 19, 19 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it yeah. has, you know. Yeah. Uh, to enlighten on that, I got a phone call just the other day from an activities director and she says to me, she says, this gentleman, Rick, wants your phone number. I said, well, sure, give it to him. He calls me up and he says, Rick, um, I saw you performing at a nursing home. And the Lord put the spirit on me that I should be doing this. I have a record now on the radio. I'm playing at Dollywood. And I want you to know that you are inspiration for me. I'm singing nursing homes every day. It made me feel like I hit the million dollar lottery. Because now there's someone else that's going to spread love now in a sick home which really need it, you know? And you just multiplied the love. I mean, mm -hmm. it started as one, and now it's two. And now he, and now he's playing to Dollywood, so think about the people he's impacting. Yeah, and now he'll yeah. share that with them, and it'll just keep on going, keep on going. Yeah. Do good, because when you do good, good is coming to you. I haven't been homeless. My wife divorced me. My wife took all the things that I was possessed with her together, but I haven't been homeless yet. I haven't been without food yet. I'm still able to do my work. If... I can't go into the sick home and do my work, then I'm not feeling like I'm worthy anymore. Mm -hmm. As long as the Almighty let me do that, Mama may forsake me, 
brother may forsake me, wife may forsake me, but Jah will never forsake me because I'm doing his work, not the work for mankind. So that's how I see it. Right. That's righteous, man. And anything new you're working on? Oh, yeah. We have some big tunes coming out. Um, we have some tunes I'm going to be playing um, this Saturday. Uh, Disobedient Child, you know, uh, Freedom, all of those tunes there. Rastafari, you know, we have a tune coming. Um, what the tune goes? It says, um, um, Give I the blessing, the blessed people, and Lord Jah, the people need a blessing. Give I edification, O Lord, to edify the people, the people need edification. Give our healing, O Lord, to heal the people. The people need a healing. Hear my cry. Yeah, those tunes is coming out. Man, hell yeah. I got a little bit of, like goosebumps or something right now. <laughs> is it cold in here? Like <laughs> Nah, that's um that's mad that's that's mad righteous, man. And um We're gonna play some of your tunes too. We got we got freedom and then we got a mystery tune. I don't know. We haven't picked it out yet to tell you the truth, but You'll know when it's time. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll put it in post. We'll make it work. <laughs> yeah, man, just show love and everything, man. No business, but nothing but love. Hell Listen yeah. to your parents. Obey your mentors. Love is the key. Ricky, Mr. Ricky Starr, thank you so much for coming on V3. Thank you so much. Yeah, Bless thanks, you. man. Yes, sir. Um, thank you, the listeners, for listening this whole time. And... Uh, Hope you enjoyed it and tune in uh, every week because we got some killer interviews lined up. I and, hope. And you can catch uh, Mr. Ricky Star on Facebook, Reverb Nation, Instagram, and YouTube. And th- th- that type- is Ricky Star with two R's. And Thank a, you, sir. The, mm-hmm. Ricky has an E in it too, right? Yeah, R I C K E Y, yes, and two R's, yes. Yeah, all right. And we got the Musical Therapy Ministries.org. Support, please. All right, that'll wrap it up for the podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you again, Mr. Ricky Starr. You're welcome. And we hope to see everyone again next week. Peace out.